Hello and welcome to our PO Education Series, the first of many more to follow where we hope to provide you with insight on topics that will complement your academic experience and career. I'm Jacqueline Romero, the Director of Student Engagement, along with my colleague, Melissa Valle, Associate Director and Student Success Coach. A few things before we get started, please be sure to mute yourselves. If you have any questions, feel free to type in the chat box. Melissa will assist. We also have a Q&A at the end of the series. This series will be recorded and added to our PO YouTube channel for you to reference at any time. For those who have additional questions after the series has ended, feel free to send us an email. We'll go ahead and place that in the chat box. We thank you for your participation and we hope you enjoy yourselves. Now I will turn it over to Melissa to introduce our guest speaker. Thank you, Jacqueline. It is my honor to introduce our speaker, Victor Soto. He has been with Pacific Oaks for 16 years. During the time he's earned his bachelor's in human development, early childhood education, a master's in human development, early childhood education, and college teaching. Victor Soto is the executive director for our very own Pacific Oaks College Children's School in Pasadena, California, an early childhood educator working with young children and their families in different communities for more than 25 years. Also, he is an adjunct professor for Pacific Oaks College and UCLA Extension, sharing his experiences teaching in the classroom with adult learners, a presenter at conferences and leading workshops on various topics related to progressive education and early childhood education. Most importantly, he is a proud father of two very energetic and fun boys, Joaquin and Santiago. Today's episode is titled, our topic is a journey in early childhood education, from teacher to professor to executive director, all while balancing life. I now present to you, Victor Soto. Thank you so much for the introduction. Thank you, Jacqueline and Melissa. Uh, it's my honor to be here today to share my journey. Um, so I hope that I can um, assist you all in your careers, your academic experience at Pacific Oaks College. As uh, Melissa shared a little bit of my bio, um, I have a connection to the college being a Pacific Oaks graduate in my undergrad uh, in, the, in the human development program. And then uh, went back later, which I'll discuss in my PowerPoint presentation uh, to get my master's degree. Um, so thank you so much for making the time again to be here tonight. Um, as Jacqueline said, if you're comfortable, feel free to share uh, your screen and I'd love to engage and see your face uh, on screen. If it's not possible, it's totally okay. I understand that there's uh, other complexities that uh, happen uh, that maybe not permit you to have your, uh, your camera on. So um, with that said, I wanna, um, introduce myself. Uh, if we can go to the next slide, please. Um, I This is a photo of me and my mom. She's 84, degree, uh, four, 84 years old. She is uh, the love of my life. Um, the young I am the youngest of 10 uh, of an immigrant family growing up in Mexico City. Um, many, many challenges, as you can imagine. Uh, often when I tell people that I am the youngest of 10, they go, 10? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that's a uh, I, I joke around, I just a, a heads up, I have a very, um, a lot of humor. Uh, so my presentation is gonna be filled with a lot of humor. Uh, this is just my disposition in life. Um, I like to share that my family members used to fight over me. You know, my sisters and my brothers, um, they would fight for me. They were like, no, go with your sister. She's gonna take care of you today. No, go with your brother. He's gonna take care of you today. But at a very young age, I figured out all right, so my brother has a job. He works at a store. Like, I love going to the store. My sister has already moved out. So I love going to her house because she has all kinds of different foods that we don't have at home. And so I kind of figured out, you know, the different roles that my siblings played in my life. Um, but, you know, I joke around when they said that, you know, they used to fight over me being the youngest, but they did. So I was loved by all of my siblings and my mom, as I mentioned, um, I grew up in Mexico City. Um, I also grew up, you know, in a household with a lot of uh, domestic violence, uh, alcohol abuse, um, and I want to share that up front because, you know, it's been part of my journey growing up in a household when, as an educator now, when we talk about welcoming children into our classrooms, we look at the different systems that impact human development, you know, and I think about my journey in relation to now making the choice to be an educator, when I opened up the doors, um, you know, to working with young children in the classroom, uh, as well as, you know, the work that I'm doing as an adjunct professor, which I'll talk about in one of my other slides later on. 
in terms of understanding the, again the different systems that impact you know our development and and that's really one of the things and one of the primary reasons that led me to you know exploring Pacific Oaks College as an institution to better support me as an educator and again some of the growth that I've experienced uh, in my journey here. So being the youngest of 10, um, not an easy, you know, but very fun experience uh, growing up in Mexico. L lots of fun memories growing up, playing games in the street, playing with my siblings, uh, eating, dancing, you know, things like that, right? It's the, the traditions that our culture has growing up in Mexico are, are very rich. It's the things that I still practice with my own children uh, as a father. But along the way, when I was about seven years old, I uh, we made the transition to move from Mexico to the U.S. Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it wasn't easy living in a household that, you know, there was a, a lot of uh, physical abuse and uh, an abuse of alcohol. And so my mom, you know, understood the the danger that it put her and her family in. And so she decided to, you know, come to the U.S. Uh, like many immigrant families, you know, in search of um, a better life, you know. And so um, I appreciate the the challenges that she endured as, as a single mother, you know, with ten children and the complexities and the decisions that she had to make in terms of who to bring with her and who to leave behind. My sisters, who are much older, my brother's twenty five year old, twenty five years older than me, and some of my siblings were in their, you know, 20, 20 years plus older than me, were already, you know, um, adults and making their own decisions about life. And so, um, that was, you know, again, I'm sure as a parent, for those of you who are parents, I'm sure you also navigate those challenges yourselves, depending on the age of your children, right? And so, uh, this is why I have nothing but love and respect for my mom because. At a very young age, um, she was she filled the role of both mother and father. You know, um, something about myself, as some of you who are educators are maybe aware, with you know the adverse childhood experiences. You know, when I learned about that as a student, and again now that I know a little bit more about that uh, as an adjunct professor, passing that information on to other students, I think about again the the lists that I checked off. Like, yep, that's me. That's me. That's me. That's me. And again, just really understanding, you know, um, how that's impacted me and the reflection piece as a student at Pacific Oaks College as part of my academic experience, again, has really helped transform my views on life, uh, just as a human, as a parent, but also as an educator, when I'm working with young children, when I'm working with adult learners, um, it's been so transformative uh, in terms of, you know, who I was and where I am. You know, often I think about when I hear people say, uh, don't change. And I'm like, change is necessary. Change is, change is growth. You know, I work for Pacific Oaks Children's School. It's a, one of the leading schools in progressive early child education. And in order pro to progress, we have to move forward. We have to grow. You know, we have to continue to be an adult learner. And so I try to practice that. Um, so made the transition to move to the United States and, you know, trying to adapt to being in a new country, speak a new language, new friendships, um, you know, trying to find a, a home, trying to find food, you know, dealing with the scarcity of uh, food and financial stability. That was something that, again, also kind of impacted my development in terms of understanding how, again, the different systems that impact different families in our communities. Um, in some communities, um, and I'll talk a little bit about the different communities that, is, that I've worked in, um, it, you know, it, we carry our experiences into the classroom, right? And so we, we know this as educators when we're working with different children in different communities. And now myself, I, again, I'm trying to pass that information to adult learners in the college course, uh, in college courses. So I want to se segue on to the next slide where, you know, as an adolescent, um, you know, I had a very different um, perspective on life. You know, J. Cole's one of my favorite rappers. You know, this is one of my favorite quotes from one of his songs. Never seen no one driving a Bentley. I can be out here mopping up Wendy's. You know, uh, sometimes rap music like, you know, art imitates life, right? And so becoming an adolescent, <clears throat> Growing up in a very difficult uh, community of South Central LA, again, a lot of drug violence, uh, alcohol, you know, gang violence was something that, you know, became a norm, if you will, you know, it, I became a product of my environment, you know, and I started to realize that um, 
very quickly, a lot of my friends were either dying or were incarcerated or were having a lot of problems. And I knew that um, I, I personally had to do some change in myself in terms of the people that I associated with. You know, in Spanish, there's the saying that says, um, Dime con quien te juntas y yo te digo quien eres. It's a, tell me who you hang around with and I will tell you who you are. You know, so uh, somewhere between 15, 17, 18 years old, you know, honestly, again, living in South Central, surrounded by, you know, gang, gang violence and drug abuse, I honestly didn't think I was going to make it through high school, as some of my friends weren't. But um, my mom became, again, the pillar of the motivation of echale ganas, you know, you can do it, you know, um, here I am working two jobs so that you can have a better life. You know, that really resonated with me, you know, uh, as much as it hurt sometimes to not see her be home, you know, working long hours, two jobs, just to be able to provide food, you know, really, uh, my voice is crackling, as you can tell, because again, that's something that, you know, hits really at the heart of who I am in terms of understanding what she did as a parent to be able to provide for her kids. And I was like, all right, I really got to like, you know, strap my boots up and kind of, you know, put some work into things. So um, let's segue into the next slide. Um, I ran into one of my friends who from high school who was working as an assistant teacher at uh, 9th Street Elementary, which is uh, near downtown LA. Um, it looks very different now than it did back uh, when I was working there as an assistant teacher. But in order for me to work at an elementary school, um, you know, I had to go to school myself, which is not something that I thought, you know, I wanted to do. Um, at the same time, I was living with uh, one of my brothers and he had two girls and was welcoming his third daughter. And um, I was blown away by the fact that there was this little child <laughs> uh, growing, uh, eating, crawling, walking, talking. And I came to learn that, you know, there was a field dedicated to the, the development of young children, child development. Um, again, my lack of knowledge and information about, you know, the different careers that were available um, was just something that I didn't know that I could do. So I enrolled at community college, started taking some child development courses and started seeing um, everything that I was reading about Piaget's stages of development and Erickson and Vygotsky, um, learned about Barbara Rogoff and John Dewey. And I was like, I now I can see what, you know, I'm learning and I can see it in my my niece and you know as a child who a baby and my older nieces helping them in school and understanding the importance of the role that parents and caregivers play in the lives of young children the importance of school and community um, I really fell in love with the field of child development um, at Ninth Street Elementary I met some wonderful teachers that have shaped my my development of who I am now um, one particular teacher, Cynthia Leva, um, I remember having a conversation with her about seeing some of my friends who, you know, who I met at the elementary school, you know, who had um, were already, you know, about maybe the same age or maybe older in their 20s, who had already moved out, had their own apartment, were in relationships, um, had a car. And here I was struggling, um, just trying to make ends meet, you know, living with my brother. Um, and so I had this hunger for like, yeah, I've sort of like wasted my life, if you will. And I remember doing a project for one of the courses that I was taking at Pacific Oaks College around research. And so Cynthia Leva, the teacher, um, she, you know, she took the time to answer my questions. And she asked me more about, you know, what, why I was interested in becoming an educator, really like paid attention to me, really took the time to um, support me. And this is why many years later, I still remember her name because it really impacted me the fact that she took the time to mentor me and something that I now think about in the different roles and capacities that I've had in terms of how I want to be able to give back to this field. She said, you know, Victor, it wasn't that, you know, you wasted your time, as you say, that's just how I described my, my teen years as just being a knucklehead, you know, doing the things that all of my friends were doing. Um, and she said, you know, look at you, you look at what you're doing now, you know, you're taking, you know, 15 units, 18 units a semester of courses, you know, uh, uh, per course in the course load of a semester so that you can graduate. 
She's like, you're, you're doing the work that you're, that you need to do in order to get ahead. And maybe what you needed in life was just, you know, that time, you know, to, to get that out of your system. And I was like, you know, that's maybe, you know, maybe my perception on life was just very different. Whereas I was seeing, seeing as it a waste of time, you know, maybe what I needed was that, you know, and I was able to reshift my focus to going to school, you know? And so, um, along the way, I met another wonderful teacher. Her name is Lisa Duarte, who used to work at Ninth Street Elementary. Uh, her I keep in contact on Facebook. Um, she was impressed at the fact that um, I ended up coming here to the children's school as a master teacher because she herself was a, a graduate of Pacific Coast College and also applied to work here. And or as it turned out, she didn't get the job. But um, so she was really happy that I ended up coming here to work at the children's school. She was like, what? I'm so proud of you. And it really touched my heart that um, she was the one that introduced me to Pacific Oaks College. You know, I, I had to come to the decision of what I wanted to do in my life in terms of my career. Um, and so formerly at Nicer Elementary, I was working for what used to be called the SRLDP program, the School Language Readiness, Language Readiness development program, um, formerly known as like a pre-K program. Um, and I noticed that Lisa herself just had a very diff different disposition about how she worked with young children and the way that she worked around the curriculum that, you know, she had to follow uh, for LEUSD. Um, but I was really passionate about working with the younger children versus, you know, uh, when I was a TA for the third graders, fourth graders, fifth graders, I really fell in love with like the pre-K children. Um, and so she said to me, as I, you know, shared with her that I had to make a decision about where do I go after community college? And she said, you know, if you really want to stay in early child education, I highly recommend that you go to Pacific Oaks College. So I looked at their website. Um, I, you know, uh, I applied, uh, I got accepted um, and I loved the human development program. I met with an enrollment counselor, my advisor, Olga Winbush, may she rest in peace, was one of the greatest uh, persons also who shaped my development and my, had a huge impact uh, on myself in terms of being an educator. Um, wonderful uh, core faculty at Pacific Oaks College. Um, she really helped me to understand the different systems uh, in play when it comes to education and how that impacts different communities. Um, and so, a couple years later, um, I graduated from Pacific Oaks College with my bachelor's degree from the Human Development Program with a specialization in early child education. Um, I was able to, again, really look at um, the field of education working primarily at 9th Street where um, it's located near downtown LA, uh, very close to Skid Row where a number of the families you know, are homeless, uh, are in uh, shelters who also deal with, you know, the scarcity of food and deal with, you know, the financial stressors of they themselves being immigrant families. And I really enjoyed my years of working there because it, again, it resonated with me, their, their struggles, you know, being an immigrant myself, the fact that, you know, A, I knew what it was like to be a child coming from Mexico and um, landing in Santa Ana near Orange County where no one spoke Spanish. None of my teachers spoke Spanish. And so I knew that I was making a difference in the lives of young children and in the families, being the fact that I was a native Spanish speaker and that I could help to translate at parent meetings, that I could support them by filling out paperwork, you know, that wasn't in, in Spanish uh, during those years. Um, but then came an opportunity for me to, you know, work in another, in another capacity as a lead teacher in uh, another child development center. And from there, uh, welcoming, um, welcoming um, practicum students into my classroom. So we can segue on to the next slide. So um, as I said, I'm a Pacific Oaks graduate. Uh, this is actually the Westmoreland campus where Pacific Oaks College uh, used to be um, right off of uh, Orange Grove prior to it moving to uh, the Eureka campus. Um, I actually graduated on this nice green lawn back in 2001. Uh, oh, no, I just dated myself. <laughs> uh, but one of the things that I also want to note about Pacific Oaks College that I really loved uh, as a student there was this idea of me being like this non-traditional student that, um, you know, I didn't make the transition that many students do going from high school to college. You know, I took a break. 
I was doing other things. Um, but it was great. It was great to be able to find Pacific Oaks College and, and know that um, I was a valued member of the classroom, that my insights were important. I remember having a really great discussion with one of my instructors about um, the, uh, the debate around phonics and whether how culturally, um, you know, my, I could just hear my mom saying, you know, repetition, repetition, repetition. You just got to learn your timetables. You just got to learn how to spell, you know, and the discussion in the classroom was uh, around whether um, phonics was important or not important for young children to, to learn how to uh, write or, you know, how to speak. Um, and, you know, again, it just kind of stayed with me that uh, I could have a difference of opinion and that having a difference of opinion and a different view on things was something that was welcomed, uh, encouraged, you know, to in, in a classroom where we all had different walks of lives and we all had different perspectives about lives. Um, and it, for me, it really solidified the fact that, you know, I was in the right setting at Pacific Oaks College because, again, I just had a different outlook on life and my experiences, as we all know, are all of our experiences shape who, who we are in life. So um, from here, as I mentioned, um, I took another job at another school uh, as a lead teacher working in my own classroom, uh, welcoming practicum students who they themselves were, you know, going to school. And so it was a great opportunity for me to, um, again, share my experience, mentor them um, as they were working on their lesson plans um, on developing, you know, uh, web designs for curriculum ideas. Um, and then just, you know, also supervising assistant teachers, you know, something that I did for a number of years, but now I was the person that was, you know, uh, guiding them, mentoring them in the same way that I had teachers who inspired me to do that. Um, so we could segue onto the next uh, slide. From there, um, so I want to explain uh, the story behind this car. Um, <clears throat> from there, I realized that, you know, again, as I mentioned, um, I was an adult, you know, and I had this a very similar car like this. It's a Toyota Tercel that my brother had passed on to me. He had crashed it before 9-11 and he got um, recalled back to, to Japan in the Marine Corps. And so, you know, I was driving around this, this little car that was crashed and I was like, again, realizing, you know, I, I need to grow up. I need to take life a little bit more serious. Um, and I remember meeting uh, a number of other teachers uh, men, particularly, um, I know that that's a whole debate, men in early child education, but I remember meeting a couple of other men who were a little bit younger than me, and I remember joking around with them, you know, I had made the leap from a uh, lead teacher to assistant director, and I was driving around this, this little car that was crashed and dented, and I remember joking around with them one day, and I was like, you know, one day, all this could be yours, you know, a car like that. And they were just laughing, you know, um, but I was joking around about, you know, the car, but I wanted, I, then I had a, a very serious talk with them about, you know, I think I was 29 at the time and they were like 23 and 24. And I was encouraging them, you know, to, to go to school, to get their bachelor's degree, you know, so that they could also take advantage of opportunities that were coming up so that they can go from being an assistant teacher to a lead teacher or to join me as an administrator, you know, at the center that we were working at. Um, so again, as I said, um, uh, I went, you know, from this particular center, I went back to school. If we can segue to the next transition to the next slide. Um, I became, you know, known as like the preschool teacher, you know, and often one of the things that, you know, I, uh, the reactions that I would tell people, right. They're like, oh, so you're a graduate. You went to school. And I'm like, yep, I have my bachelor's degree. What do you do for a living? Well, I'm a preschool teacher. You know, they're like, or they're like, what grade do you teach? You know, as if like uh, education, right? There's this dichotomy in education where um, kindergarten, kindergarten to the 12 is seen as education, but being a preschool teacher isn't. And so I had to deal with a lot of that myself as a, as a male working in a field that was dominantly, uh, predominantly, you know, female. Um, I have nothing but respect for, you know, the teachers, uh, women who have worked in this field. Uh, I've learned everything that I've learned um, has been from primarily women in this field. Um, never really saw a, a male director in this field, uh, a few male teachers in the field. So it was always great to have at least you know, another guy to talk to. But in many of the courses that I was taking that were not child development, you know, whether it was math or biology, sociology, 
there was there was a lot of women in those courses too. You know, I think there was something to be said about the trajectory of women going back to school, you know, and also getting degrees and also, you know, being in the workforce that I really admired. So again, being a preschool teacher, you know, came with some challenges, um, working in different communities, as I mentioned, um, I worked at Ninth Street Elementary, which, you know, again, was a community that was surrounded by homelessness uh, and financial uh, instability. Um, I worked at another center where it was uh, part of the Salvation Army, where there was a child development center, uh, and it also had a permanent and transitional housing for families with HIV and AIDS. So that particular population, you know, of families was very different from my previous experience in that many of the families there were dealing with medical ailments. Um, the Child Development Center was there to provide care for the families who would take their medication um, that you know, often would sedate them, um, put them to sleep. And so often they would drop off their children you know, uh, under our care. And then they would basically you know, go back to their apartments to be able to rest. And so how wonderful was this organization to be able to think about the different needs that families were dealing with uh, in terms of having those medical ailments and challenges and to be able to provide a child development center that could provide quality care for their young children. Um, and again, that happened, that, that led me to um, move from being a lead teacher to uh, an assistant director. And that's when I thought, you know what, I need to, oh, let's segue onto the next slide, please. Um, that's when I learned a little bit more about, you know, this concept of, conscious competence and the way that we learn how to do things and the opportunity that I had to, you know, mentor uh, assistant teachers, to mentor practicum students, to work collaboratively with other teachers, to understand the triangle relationship of being an educator in the classroom, working with young children, working with the parents, and working with the administration. Um, stepping into the administrative role, again, now my, my role shifted in that I had to mentor and support the teachers that were uh, part of the Child Development Center that I worked in. So um, when I talk about, you know, again, my experience at Pacific Oaks College, something like this, this concept of conscious competence, you know, it was something that I realized many years later, I am still doing, you know, as you'll see in my presentation, it'll come up again because it's something that is sort of a revolving door in terms of my understanding of what it means to be a lifelong learner and to continue to ad uh, acquire new skills that now I get to sort of pass on to other people. Um, if we could segue on to the next slide. Part of that was becoming a parent. You know, uh, I'm a father of two boys. These are my my kids, Joaquin and Santiago. As Melissa had mentioned, uh, they are very energetic. Very as young children, they were super energetic. Um, one of my neighbors would always say, I, "I see you outside with your kids all the time," and I'm like, "I have to wear them out because I need them to go to sleep. I want to get some sleep." Um, you know, with uh, Joaquin, it was riding his bike. With Santiago, it was let's go to the mall and walk around and do some laps around the mall so that you know, we can come back and take a bath and read some books and put you to sleep. Um, it's been a wonderful uh, journey you know, being a parent. Um, and now that my kids are 15 and 12, they're no longer uh, very young children like the ones that I used to work with uh, as a preschool teacher. But I love that being at Pacific Oaks Children's School, you know, I became a parent here. And one of the things that I like to tell parents is that, um, you know, being a, a teacher at Pacific Oaks Children's School and then becoming a parent and having my kids attend the children's school has been nothing but the best, you know, because as much as I love and appreciate the feedback that I get from them for the experiences that I've been able to provide for their children, I now got to receive that, you know, in this wonderful community that is the Pacific Oaks Children's School. Um, there are some amazing and wonderful teachers here. Uh, Adrian Parker, who is our, our most seasoned teacher, has been here for 25 years. Um, Quinn Hunter, Hunter McGonagall, who uh, is what my associate director here, came to the children's school as a child herself. Her sister is currently um, a parent here. Her daughter is two years old in Bamboo Yard. You know, we have a legacy of families who come back with their children here at the children's school. And so for me to see my kids grow up and to have the foundation of their development happen here at the children's school is it's just so enriching and so rewarding. Um, 
as you can see, like we're, we're all smiles, you know, in the photos, uh, but certainly parenthood comes with its challenges. If for those of you who are parents, you understand what this means, right? So here it's, uh, you know, with young children, it's, they don't want to share. It's, you know, somebody took something away from me, you know, as they get a little bit older, it's more about um, the dangers of social media, right? And bullying in school. So uh, I'm growing as a parent, but um, I'm learning a lot. Um, my kids are, as I tell parents, they're not, not immune to um, temper tantrums or the struggles of having to work on science projects or dioramas or book reports or oral presentations. You know, I have to step in and, and do all the same work that all parents have to do. It just looks a little bit different as we go along the way. Um, I'm not looking forward to teaching them to drive. <laughs> but I know that it's coming up. So um, I love my kids. Uh, I just wanted to introduce a little bit of who they are and, um, and, and just to, you know, share my kids with you here today. Um, but becoming a parent, if we can segue onto the next slide, um, prompted me to, you know, go back to school. Uh, because being a preschool teacher, again, um, doesn't pay the bills. You know, there's, as we can argue about, you know, the the challenges of, of bringing a preschool teacher, you know, um, but becoming a parent and being responsible and having student loans to have to pay, you know, man, I had to go back to school to, you know, work on my master's degree. Um, but I also knew that there was a lot of skills that I was lacking that I needed to have when I was working with adults. Um, I have to say that that was like one of my biggest challenges um, being a graduate student. Uh, I wrote a lot, a lot of papers around my struggles around that, but um, I also knew that I was getting the skill set that I now get to um, uh, use as an adjunct professor. And as I've made the leap from not just being a teacher, but an adjunct professor and also the um, formerly the associate director, and now the executive director here at the Children's School. Um, it's also helped me, you know, develop the skills to, um, as Melissa had mentioned, to, you know, not only teach courses, but to present at uh, conferences and to lead workshops with other educators. Um, I use my 25 years plus of working in the classroom to uh, highlight some of the work that we do here at the Children's School to, you know, everything from gardening to how we incorporate STEM activities to how we uh, intentionally create um, a community that's diverse, uh, equitable, inclusive of all families from all walks of life because there's a value in the experiences that everybody brings to a community. So it's my, my pleasure and my honor to serve as the executive director here at Pacific Coast Children's School because I know that there's a history here at the Children's School where emergent curriculum rose from the Children's School, Head Start programs rose from the work that was done here at the Children's School, anti-bias education, the work of Betty Jones and Louise Durbin Sparks rose here from the Children's School. So I think about this in relation to my role as the executive director because it's a, it's a big uh, bearing to have to carry forward knowing that there's a, a call for social justice and for the work that we're doing here with the children, but also with parents. And so I share a lot of my experiences here at the Children's School with uh, students in my courses when I taught the Emergent Curriculum courses or how to create an inclusive classroom at Pacific Oaks College to the Infant and Toddler Development courses that I teach for UCLA Extension um, and looking at um, a course like the Child Family Community. Um, I think that, you know, there's, uh, there's plenty of books, as you can tell, my bookshelf course uh, textbooks that highlight the work at Pacific Oaks Children's School that has been documented in textbooks for students to learn about how to work with young children, how to work with families, how to work with diverse communities, could diverse diverse families, and how to create a, a community that's inclusive of um, of all families. Again, um, Pacific Oaks College has played a, a big uh, impact in my development in terms of where I am now. So um, I tell people, you know, I kind of I I live and I walk the PO way because. I went to college there. Um, my kids came to the children's school. I worked at the children's school and I get to be the executive director of the children's school. So um, as my title says, you know, uh, the journey goes from being an assistant teacher to a lead teacher to an adjunct professor to an executive director, all while being a parent and trying to balance life. And so how do I do that? <laughs> Next slide. 
Oh, uh, so this is uh, the slide about, again, sort of the revisiting of the information and the experiences that um, I have had to be able to share once again with, uh, with families and college students in different capacities. Um, let's move over to the next slide, please. There's still a lot to learn. Um, I love reading. I love listening to podcasts, uh, going to workshops and conferences. Um, a lot of the stuff, you know, that I'm reading and learning. Uh, I'm, I'm also a writer. I like to take notes. I like to reflect on things. Um, and then I think about how I can use the information that I'm learning to enhance something about myself, to share with others, um, to embed a, a daily practice, whether that's um, reflection, mindfulness, or to practice self-care um, is one of the ways that I continue to um, just enjoy life, you know, and where I'm at in my life. Next slide, please. So being an adjunct professor, people ask me, what is it like to be an adjunct professor? Uh, again, I kind of, I joke around and I tease, you know, I say to the children, we tell them, you know, put your shoes in the shoe basket. To the parents, we remind them, um, please make sure that you sign in and out. And to college students, we remind them your homework is due on Sunday, right? At 11.59 PM Pacific time. Uh, lots of reminders, uh, but it's a it's a great experience. I, I wasn't sure that I could um, that that I could lead you know college courses, but um, again, I've had a lot of mentorship from a lot of people who have helped me from putting together PowerPoint presentations to expanding my lectures to understanding how other people learn uh, and understanding that there's a gap of information and how I can share that information uh, and how they can you know, use that information themselves in the classroom. Um, again, I look to the Pacific Oaks Children's School and my years of experience working here um, to share some of that with people who are interested in uh, being educators. Um, and of course, always speak highly of the college because again, that's where I learned a lot myself. Next slide. Oh, parenthood, yes. So I mentioned uh, earlier that, uh, you know, my kids are not prone to tantrums and, one of the questions that I often get from parents is, what do I do in this situation? How do I handle tantrums? How do I handle nighttime routines? How do I handle potty training? Um, how do I handle sibling rivalry? So again, as a parent myself, but also with a lot of the knowledge that I read in books um, and recycling some of this information, you know, one of the things that I do is I support parents in their journey of um, parenthood. You know, parent, as I mentioned, parenthood comes with a lot of challenges. And so often, you know, we sit down, I have Zoom meetings like this to talk about how the latest research on neuroscience supports our work in the classroom, how they themselves can develop uh, nighttime routines, or how understanding how the automatic nervous system works um, when their children are engaged in a fight or flight response so that they can be calm, be present, how their children need to be able to develop self-regulation skills, but that also requires them to be um, self-regulated, to be able to co-regulate their children. So there's lots of research that, um, lots of books that I've read that have helped me to help other parents who are themselves, you know, with your young children who are um, infants, toddlers, and preschool age three to five. Um, that's some of the work that we're doing here at the Children's School in terms of the parent education that we provide to our families here. Next slide, please. And so now being the executor, the executive director of Pacific Oaks Children's School, there's a, a, a misunderstanding of what that means for some people when I tell them that I'm the executive director of a school and they go like an elementary school, like a high school. And I'm like, no, like a preschool. Um, and so you'd be surprised the number of things that we do here at Pacific Oaks Children's School. We have a wonderful parent association that puts together a number of events, um, everything from parent education to our fall festival that's coming up, which is like our school carnival, um, putting together a spring benefit uh, that supports our scholarship fund. Um, earlier, I mentioned that um, we value diversity and inclusion and we make it equitable for families. Um, last year, we raised about $120,000 for our scholarship fund, which allows for families who could otherwise not afford the tuition here to be able to bring their children here at the children's school so that they can also experience um, the same experiences that other families have, including my own children. Next slide, please. 
oh, previous slide. I think you skipped one. Yep. So as I mentioned, you know, I try to embed a lot of daily practices, everything from mindfulness to reflection to sometimes fighting the urge to, to stand up from this chair um, to just kind of allowing things to sink in and to just really reflect on what's happening in my life. Um, I try to make that a daily habit of just practicing that mindfulness, uh, really appreciating the, the everyday things, the opportunities that I have uh, when I'm present in the classroom with young children, with my own kids, when I'm talking to teachers, when I'm listening to parents, uh, really being present so that I can really enjoy, uh, be able to take, uh, take away from our conversation from an experience that for me, I find it really rewarding and enriching um, as an educator, as a director, uh, as a human being. You know, I, I really enjoy the connectedness that I have with the, the everyday people that I come across uh, every day here uh, at the children's school, but outside of life. Um, that's how I sort of, you know, get by with uh, my work here. Um, so, uh, this brings me to the end of my presentation. Uh, I appreciate the time that you have given me to listen to my story. Um, I am open for questions or comments. Thank you so much, Victor. Such a wonderful story and journey that you have led with so much experience. Um, I'm sure uh, most of us here can definitely relate to your shared experiences. Thank you for that. Uh, right now, we just want to open it up uh, to see if anyone has any questions. Feel free to unmute yourselves, uh, raise your hand, or uh, type it in the chat box. Um, but yeah, all right, well, we have tomorrow. Come on in. I apologize for the noise. I'm at gymnastic practice, but <laughs> I really appreciate you sharing your um, story. But I, I was interested in, in also um, hearing... Um, like that transition from the assistant director to executive director and kind of what that looked like. And then, cause I aspired to be an executive director one day. So I'm wondering how that path um, transpired and then like any type of helpful tools that you can, or, you know, some kind of tips or anything you can give. Oh, good question. And uh, kudos to you for wanting to make that transition. Um, I think one of the things that has really helped me a lot has been my communication skills. I really um, value the fact that uh, I'm a reflective listener. You know, often there's uh, people will share with you something, you know, sometimes they don't come out to say it. So listening for facts, listening for values, seeking clarity about things that they want or they want from you, um, expectations, right? So I would definitely uh, encourage you to uh, strengthen your communication skills. Um, you might feel like you already have that, but I feel that that's something that can be an ongoing skill to always revisit and always enhance. Um, it's really helped me. I feel like often when I have to talk to parents or listen to parents or students, right? Um, I feel like there's always like a, a, great, uh, a great outcome, a positive one, one where they feel like they're heard. Um, I understand that sometimes people um, feel like they didn't get their way. And I remind them that not getting your way doesn't mean that you didn't get, you weren't heard. There's a big difference, right? So uh, I think, uh, as I mentioned, having great communication skills, but also um, don't be afraid to, to fail. You know, I, some of the greatest uh, strengths and growths have come from, you know, uh, opportunities where um, I messed up, you know, um, I didn't keep my calm. Um, I didn't do my work or I overlooked something. And so, um, you know, I think failure is okay. Um, and I think learning from those things are, are equally important. Um, I also seek a lot of uh, guidance from other people around me. Uh, I think one of the best advice that I got from somebody recently was, uh, you're not alone. You know, people have supported you along the way. So lean on the people who are around you for support. And so that's something that uh, I am definitely practicing. So I do reach out to people, you know, to for advice, for suggestions, and also for help. You know, um, I have also learned that um, I I used to be the type of person who would say, um, people would come to me, can you help me with this? Sure. Can you take this on? Sure. You know, um, responsibility is one of my uh, top five uh, strength finders. 
but also is managing different top uh, different projects. But sometimes my plate gets full, you know, and I've learned to recognize that my plate is full, and I've learned to say, "Can't do that," or "I can't take that on," and and to feel okay about that, you know, that it's okay to say no to some things. So, those that would be my my advice to you, uh, Tamar. Thank you. Such great points. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, we have Denise. Come on in. Denise, are you there? You're on mute. Hi, guys. I am driving. My apologies. No problem. <laughs> okay. Um, I guess my question is kind of identical to uh, Tamara's, I believe that's the, her name. I'm sorry if I get it wrong because I just can't see that right now. Um, oh, yeah. Tamar. Tamar. <laughs> Tamar. Okay. I was very close. Thank you for the correction. Um, it's kind of the same question, like in the stages of transition. Because um, I'm teaching at USC now in an early childhood you know, program. And, you know, in conversation, and I'll look at my, my resume. It's always been this debilitating dialogue of you're overqualified massively but then minorly underqualified and it's like how do I get my foot in that space where I am a little bit underqualified because my graduate degree is not there to full completion um but as we all know as you mentioned they don't pay well <laughs> that profession isn't one that you know pays all the bills necessary and we know the current climate and all you know the the economic inequity that's existing and now is exacerbated and it's like how do I maximize the in, like the quickness and the stress path? Like, how do I get there quicker than the patient? Because I know it's like a step and failure, but I'm like a single mom. I have no support here in the state. And I'm like, no, I have to do this right now. <laughs> and what are we supposed to do? What are some tangible kind of recommendations you would give me in my particular circumstance? With a little bit of detail I provided. I'll try to answer your question as best as possible, Denise. Um, you know, for me, it, yeah, time, you know, I have to say that um, time's not on our side, right? We want immediate results. Um, and sometimes, so two things. Um, one, it's also taken me a long time to move into the administrative uh, position. Um, as I mentioned, I've been here for, you know, not here, but in the field of education for more than 25 years, close to 30, as a matter of fact. Um, and so in uh, my pre in my first experience as an assistant director, um, I was there for a very short time because one of the struggles that I saw was that um, the things that I was learning in graduate school was not what was being practiced. And so I found that uh, the organization that I worked in um, just wasn't in line with the values that um, that I had, you know, and so I had to make the decision to leave that administrative role to come back to teaching um, for another organization where I felt comfortable and where I felt like my values aligned. You know, so there's that as my personal experience. Um, second, the tangible things. Um, you know, I, I, I know I just finished saying that um, I take on too many things, but part of my growth has come from taking on those additional projects. You know, when an opportunity came up to do like a little short TED talk, I was like, I wanna do that. I don't know how to do that, but I'm willing to learn. You know, an opportunity came up for me to do a workshop. Didn't know how to do that, but I, again, I asked for help. I got assistance um, and I, I took that on. And then um, I just kept doing the same thing where um, there was something that was interesting, um, joined a book club, you know, um, read more than I would have, you know, wanted to read. Um, but again, there were topics that were interesting to me in terms of uh, education. And so it meant, you know, once a month I was uh, not watching football, not watching basketball, uh, not hanging out with my kids. You know, I was part of a book club, but that allowed me to make uh, connections and to be able to network with other educators in different schools. You know, so it took a little bit of time, but also it was an investment um, on my end to take on those projects that have also propelled me to, again, um, so my talks on STEM activities, gardening, woodworking, um, social emotional development of young children. My time spent in the infant toddler program has helped me to develop my course. So sometimes you have to put in that work, even though there isn't a payout right away to, in order to see the payout later on. Good points, thank you, thank you. Up next, we have Quinn. 
Hi, everybody. So not so much a question, but a compliment. <laughs> um, really beautiful and powerful story, Victor. Really amazing. Thank you for sharing. I didn't know all of that about you, even though I've known you, I guess, 16 years <laughs> since you've been at PO. Um, I really admire your uh, variety of perspectives, like all your experiences and different roles you've played in the child development world. And I think that really lends itself to your ability to successfully support others because you've been there. You've been at the ground level. You've done it. You've gone through all the struggles. So I admire that. And I think that really adds to your ability to be a successful executive director today. My boss. <laughs> Thank you, Quinn. Yeah, it's interesting. One of the things that I reflect on is, you know, um, I've been a teacher in the classroom, so I know what that's like. You know, now I'm the executive director, you know, overseeing the school of teachers. Um, I've been a parent or I am a parent, so I understand what that's like in terms of the parent perspective, but I've also been a teacher, so I understand what it's like to be a teacher working with parents. Um, so I, I appreciate that. There's, a, you know, again, um, it's been a long journey, but, um, you know, I've learned to appreciate uh, all the different stages of my life um, for what they have been worth. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions, comments? No. Okay. Well, on behalf of the office of Valerie, we have one. <laughs> Look at that, Valerie. Come on in. Valerie, I'm driving, so I just try to was trying trying to type it in the chat. You said that you worked in education for a long time, but how long did it take you to complete your degree? Did you take any? I know there wasn't like high school directly to college, but between college, getting your undergrad and grad school, was there any? Pause or how long did that oh, take? Oh, yeah, there was a wide pause. <laughs> um, I got my uh, my MA, I was 39 when I uh, graduated with my master's degree. So there was a big pause from 2001 when I got my BA to whenever that was, 2016. So a 15 year gap of, you know, um, what I thought was, you know, me being a teacher working in the classroom thinking, I'm good. Um, I don't need to do more work. But again, other opportunities presented themselves. And I realized that I, I did. I had to go back to school um, if I wanted to be an administrator, um, if I wanted to be an adjunct professor. Um, I, I was, again, inspired by some of my college professors who, like, I was like, what? You teach college courses and you work with young children? I was like, that is so dope. You know, um, I really admired those particular professors. Um, and so the fact that now, you know, I get to do that is uh, pretty cool, if I don't say so myself. On behalf of the Office of Student Engagement and the Student Success Center, we would like to thank our speaker, Victor Soto, for joining us tonight and everyone here. We're so glad that you could join us tonight.